Hi everyone. The COVID pandemic continues to wreak havoc in our communities. And so it is very important that at this time we do all we can to halt the pandemic. And I know you've heard this many times, but we at the Jesuit Institute really want to encourage you to wear masks, to distance, and also to sanitize. Many people are still socializing, and this is causing an even more rapid spread of this virus. So please do all you can to make sure that you protect yourself and protect others. It is also with great sadness that we at the Jesuit Institute say farewell to Father Anthony Egan. Father Anthony, after working at the Institute for many, many years, has been given a new mission. He'll be joining the Faculty of Theology at our Jesuit School of Theology at Hakima College in Nairobi from August. He was meant to have July off to have a holiday, but unfortunately has also tested positive for COVID and so is recovering and resting at the moment. Father Bruce Boerter, the parish priest of Holy Trinity in Bramfontein, has also tested positive for COVID, so please keep him in your prayers. Father David Rowan, who many of you are inquiring about, is still recuperating from a massive operation he had, but struggles with ill health and also cancer, and really appreciates your prayers and your concern. Now, despite the fact that the offices of the Jesuit Institute are closed at the moment, we continue to try and advocate for justice and also accompany you in this difficult time. Just last week, we launched This Is Home, a series, a campaign, to try and to highlight the plight of stateless children. Children who either are stateless or will become stateless because of what the Department of Home Affairs in South Africa is doing. And we ask for your help. Sign on to this campaign. Watch the little video and also the witness of someone who is struggling because she finds herself in this position. Share this as widely as possible. And we are trying, by all means, with partner organizations, to try and ensure that the Department of Home Affairs changes this legislation. We offer on Monday evenings for the next couple of weeks a half-hour prayer time for anyone who wants to join online at 8 p.m. Please contact us for more information. The email address appears on your screen now. In August, hopefully, we will see this pandemic tapering off and the Institute offers a weekend retreat be the architect of your life at Sankwazi in KwaZulu-Natal. Anybody is welcome to come to that retreat. After that, in September, from the 4th to the 12th, we offer an eight-day directed retreat, also in Zankwazi, KwaZulu-Natal. A beautiful setting right on the beach, with plenty of space for prayer, reflection, and rest. For more information about any one of those retreats, please contact us. The email address will appear on your screen now. And so we continue our work, we continue our prayer, and we ask you to continue supporting us because we really appreciate your support at this time. May God bless you all. Welcome to St. Ignatius Chapel. Today we celebrate the 15th Sunday of Ordinary Time. Our celebrant today is Jesuit Father Russell Pollitt. of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with, and with your, your spirit. spirit. We come before the Lord as our country is in the grip of this COVID pandemic. We come with heavy hearts for what is going on around us, but also 
because we know that we are weak and frail. And so we begin this celebration by asking the Lord for mercy and forgiveness. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father where you intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on Amen. earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take, you take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are, you are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And let us pray. O God, who show the light of your truth to those who go astray, so that they may return to the right path. Give all who, for the faith they profess, are accounted Christians, the grace to reject whatever is contrary to the name of Christ, and strive after all that does it honor. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Amos. In those days, Amaziah, the priest of Bethel, said to Amos, O seer, go, flee away to the land of Judah, and eat bread there, and prophesy there, but never again prophesy at Bethel, for it's the king's sanctuary, and it is a temple of the kingdom. Then Amos answered Amaziah, I am no prophet, nor a prophet's son, but I am a herdsman and a dresser of sycamore trees. And the Lord took me from following the flock, and the Lord said to me, Go, prophesy to my people Israel. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Let us see, O Lord, your mercy, and grant us your salvation. Let, Let us, us see, O Lord, Lord your, your mercy. mercy. And, and grant, grant us, us your salvation. salvation. I will hear what the Lord God speaks. He speaks of peace for his people and his faithful. His salvation is near for those who fear him, and his glory will dwell in our land. Let, Let us see, O Lord, Lord, your mercy, mercy and, and grant, grant us your salvation. salvation. Merciful love and faithfulness have met, justice and peace have kissed. Faithfulness shall spring from the earth, and justice shall look down from heaven. Let us, Let us see, see, O Lord, Lord your mercy, and, and grant us your salvation. Also the Lord will bestow his bounty, and our earth shall yield its increase. Justice will march before him, and guide his steps on the way. Let, Let us, us see, see, O Lord, Lord your mercy, and, and grant us your salvation. salvation. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, even as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before him. He destined us in love to be his sons through Jesus Christ, according to the purpose of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace, which he freely bestowed on us in the Beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood and forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace which he lavished upon us. For he has made known to us in all wisdom and insight the mystery of his will, according to his purpose which he set forth in Christ 
as a plan for the fullness of time to unite all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. May the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ enlighten the eyes of our hearts that we might know what is the hope to which he has called us. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus called to him the twelve and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over unclean spirits. He charged them to take nothing for their journey except a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in their belts, but to wear sandals and not put on two tunics. And he said to them, Wherever you enter a house, stay there until you leave the place. And if any place will not receive you and they refuse to hear you, when you leave, shake off the dust that is on your feet for a testimony against them. So they went out and preached that people should repent. And they cast out many demons and anointed with oil many that were sick and healed them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. There is a story told about a century or two ago that the Pope decided that all Jewish people should leave Rome. And naturally, there was a big uproar uh, from the Jewish community that lived in Rome. So the Pope made a deal. He would have a religious debate with a member of the Jewish community. And if the representative from the community won the debate, the Jews could stay. And if he lost the debate, then they would move out of Rome. And so they decided to have this debate. And the Jewish community looked around to find a champion of their faith. No one wanted to volunteer to do this. It was too risky. So in desperation, they finally picked on an old man he was considered wise by the name of Moshi. And he'd spent his life opening and locking and cleaning the synagogue, a simple old man. And he agreed, but asked that there be one condition for this debate, that neither were allowed to talk during this debate. And the Pope agreed to this. And so the day of this great debate comes, and Moshe and the Pope sit opposite each other on chairs for a full minute before the Pope raised his hand and showed Moshe three. And Moshe looked back and raised just one finger. And the Pope waved his hand in a circle around his head. And Moshe pointed to the ground where he sat. And then the Pope pulled out a communion wafer and a glass of wine. And Moshe pulled out an apple. And then the Pope stood up and announced, I give up. This man is too good. The Jewish community can stay in Rome. An hour or so later, the cardinals get around the Pope because they want to know what happened. They, they ask the Pope. And the Pope said, well, first, I held up three fingers to represent the Trinity. And he responded by holding up one finger to remind me that there was still 
one God common to both our religions. Then I waved my hand around my head to show that God was all around us. And he responded by pointing to the ground, showing that God was also right here with us in our midst. And then I offered the wine and a communion wafer to show that God absolves us from our sins in the Eucharist. And he pulled out an apple to remind me of original sin. I mean, he had an answer for everything, so what could I do? Meanwhile, the Jewish community called Moshe one side. They were amazed that this old man who was uneducated had won this debate. And so they say to him, can, can you tell us what happened when you were with the Pope? And Moshe said, well, first he said to me that the Jews had three days to get out of Rome. And I told him not one of us was leaving the city of Rome. Then he told me that the whole city must be cleared of the Jewish community. And I said, no, we're staying right here where we are now. And then a woman asked him, what happened then? Moshe said, I really don't know. He took out his lunch, so I took mine out. And then he said, I've won the debate. The Jews can stay. That's a silly little story, but it says something to us about how we read signs. How we see things that very often... We think we're on some common ground, but actually we're seeing a very different picture from our own viewpoint. Amaziah, the high priest in that first reading, wants to get rid of Amos, the prophet, because the way that Amos sees things and the way that Amaziah sees things is completely different. Amos is an independent speaker of God's word, a former shepherd and tree trimmer. God has called him to tend to the flock of leaders and trim their luxurious and unjust ways. He has been given three visions of the destruction of Israel, one of locusts, one of drought, and one which shows Israel's complete collapse. He has begged the Lord to relent, and so God does, but the indulgent Leaders of Israel have continued in their ways and have not repented. They have now made the temple an unholy place. Notice how history repeats itself because leaders seem to do the same thing over and over again. Amaziah is a priest of the false sect of Bethel and he tells Amos, to get out with his false visions and predictions. He does not like the way that Amos says things. Amos, of course, does predict a few nasty things about Amaziah's own wife, to be reduced to being a streetwalker, and her children, he says, banished from the land, and he, Amaziah, will die away from the land of Israel. There are two very different worldviews at work. That of the leaders of luxury and empowered as they think in many ways to do as they please. And Amos, who speaks the values of God's kingdom. In the gospel that we heard this morning, Jesus seems to suggest that there are three, for lack of a better word, visa requirements for his apostles, specific things they need to realize before they can travel. Simplicity of life, dependence on others and their hospitality. Notice they don't need a COVID test or a vaccine to travel. What do we learn from Amos and Jesus instructing his apostles? Because Jesus' instructions too are contrary, different to what we would expect. I want to suggest that there are a few invitations for us today. The first one is to try and free ourselves from externals. 
in our desperate need to be effective, to look good, to be successful, we hang on to all sorts of things, materially and psychologically and emotionally. We think that these will somehow give us the edge or make us shine, things that we hang on to. Amos and Jesus, speaking to his apostles, needed little of anything, material or psychological or emotional, to hang on to, because they knew that what they had was inside them. They knew that what they had came from that store within them. The authority they had received was inside them, that authority that God had given them. They knew that they themselves, without any external trappings, were the message. And perhaps that's the invitation for us, to ask ourselves, how can I be the message? What might be a hindrance to me truly being the incarnation of God's message to others? Does, by desperate need to look good or to associate with certain kinds of people, hinder me from really being the message, the person who I am, knowing that I have enough inside me because that's where God reigns in the depths of my heart. The second invitation is one about bringing life to others. Amos was interested in how God was calling Israel back to life. They had completely lost their way. Jesus, too, was interested in the healing and the recovery of people who were burdened. He sends his apostles out to those who are burdened, those who need healing. In both of these readings, we see an intervention, a confrontation, a a direct honesty from the prophet Amos and from what Jesus asks his disciples to do. These are all difficult human interruptions, and most often the experience of casting out demons and bad spirits is not what we think it is. When we are freed from being overly concerned about our own possessions, our image, our success, we are freed to be concerned about how intervention and confrontation and direct honesty will bring life to others. We as the apostles are invited in our relationship with Jesus to go and confront what is not life-giving so that others may have life. This is not difficult to see in our own context, where so often we see many actions, many decisions by those in leadership that are not life-giving to others, but rather simply about themselves. And so we are invited, first of all, to confront ourselves, to ask ourselves what we need to let go of so that we are not diminished, but rather able to give life to others. And the third and final invitation, I think, is something about reading the signs of the times in our own lives, but also in our own context. Amos and Jesus and those apostles were able to read the signs of the times. And reading the signs of the times is not where it stops, because once we do read the signs of the times, we need to recognize that we have responsibility. As much as we find it difficult, we, disciples of Jesus, God's people, are also God's instruments. And Amos and Jesus and those apostles that Jesus sends knew that they were God's instruments. We must be convinced that 
without our response, others will not be able to achieve what God wills them to achieve. And therefore, we need to read the signs of the times and take responsibility for what it is that we see. The instructions that Jesus gives to those disciples, if you go and spend time reflecting of them, speaks of our interconnectedness, our dependence and hospitality. Only when we are truly concerned about others and their fate, the poor on the street corners or beggars at the gate, an economic system that constantly keeps people out, an education system that is failing the vast majority of young people in this country. Can we truly say that we are on mission with Jesus, wearing the sandals of the pilgrim, carrying no spare tunic, freed from pretense and holding the staff that reminds us of our real and only need, and that is to rely on God who sends us. Our responsibility or our ability to take responsibility for our context is what is important. Moshe and the Pope see things in that story very differently. And we, the people of God, are invited to see ourselves and the world in which we live differently to simply the common way of seeing things, the fashionable way, the conventional way of seeing things. And when we see things differently, we do not simply just accept the status quo, but rather we pray for the grace to be freed from externals so that we can really bring life to others and that we can read the signs of the times in our own lives and those of others, signs which help us to know how best we can respond and take responsibility now for the reign of the kingdom of God. Let's now make a profession of faith as we pray the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and, and in Jesus Christ, Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. We have heard God's word, and so now we bring our needs, the needs of our church, our communities, and our world before the Lord. For all Christians, that they may realize that God has made them co-workers in building the kingdom of God. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord, graciously hear us. For all those in positions of leadership, that they may learn the art of involving others. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord, graciously hear us. For all those who preach the gospel today, that God may sustain their efforts and their hope. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord, graciously hear us. For all the members of voluntary organizations, 
that God may bless and reward their generosity. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all those who are health workers who are involved in the COVID pandemic, that the Lord will continue to bless them and strengthen them as they work tirelessly, treating the sick, providing vaccinations. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all of us gathered today, that we may strive to be active members of our community, to be givers and not mere receivers. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For our own special needs. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord our God, these are our prayers. Those we have spoken out loud, but the prayer too that rests in the heart of each one of us. Answer them as you know best, through Christ Jesus, your Son, and our risen Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, fruit of the earth and work of our human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine, work of our human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Let's pray, sisters and brothers, that our sacrifice and the sacrifice of all our lives may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Creator. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all God's holy church. Look upon the offerings of the Church, O Lord, as she makes her prayer to you, and grant that when consumed by those who believe, they may bring ever greater holiness. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with, with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for you so loved the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you love in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks, as in exaltation, together we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord God, God of hosts, hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna in the, in the highest. highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna in, the in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the Jewful, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the cup, and once more giving thanks, 
he gave it to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your Your death, death, O Lord, Lord, and and profess your resurrection resurrection until until you come come again. again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Bhutti, our Bishop, and all the clergy, and all who minister to your people. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours for ever and ever. Amen. Let's now pray as the Lord Jesus taught us. Our Our Father, who who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now Now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And And with with your spirit. Let's spend a moment praying for peace. Lamb of God, you take take away away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold Jesus, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sin of the world. How blessed are we who are called to share in this supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord, I am not worthy that you should should enter under my roof, but but only say the word, and my my soul soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us all, our family and friends and all people, to life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Although you cannot receive physical communion with us now, we invite you into a moment of spiritual communion. The great medieval theologian, St. Thomas Aquinas, defines spiritual communion as an ardent desire to receive Jesus in the Holy Sacrament and a loving embrace as though we had already received him. His words are echoed by the great mystic and fellow doctor of the church, St. Teresa of Avila, who wrote, When you do not receive communion and do not attend Mass, you can make a spiritual communion, which is a most beneficial practice. By it, the love of God will be greatly impressed on you. 
At this moment, we invite you to focus on Christ and your longing for union with Him. Express your desire to feel His grace coursing through you, giving you strength and courage, particularly in these difficult times. In your desiring union, you are united with us and to Christ. In this moment, we experience the reality that is already here. Let us pray. Having consumed these gifts, we pray, O Lord, that by our participation in this mystery, its saving effects upon us may grow. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. So just before the final blessing, I think it's important for us to say that part of our taking responsibility as people of God, is to also take responsibility to try and halt the spread of this COVID pandemic. And many people still are not wearing masks and not sanitizing and socializing, uh, having parties. And it's really important for us to realize that the only way we're going to break this cycle is if all of us together take responsibility. And I think that's an important message from us here at the Jesuit Institute in this very difficult time. Please do what you can, and most especially stay away from any place where you may contract or be spreading this COVID uh, virus. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go now in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.